Good day, everyone. Todd Morris here from Jeskel Systems in Laurel, Maryland. Welcome to this uh, Cyber Sentinel and Blue Vector webinar. We're happy to have you with us. Let's jump right into it. Uh, some of you, I think, may be questioning why two separate companies with two separate solutions are doing a joint webinar. After all, Acuity Solutions and Jeskel Systems are indeed completely separate companies. There's no financial uh, interlocking relationship or anything like that, but we do we do work closely with these guys. And and the reason we're doing this as a joint webinar is quite simply because the two solutions are highly complementary. Both of them are based on machine learning as the core foundational technology to detect malicious threats in the enterprise. Both of them are easy to use. Both of them plug right into your existing network infrastructure with minimal to no uh, development work to get them up and running, and both of them work in real time. So that's a powerful list of, of, of uh, similarities between the two tools, Blue Vector and Cyber Sentinel. So then you may ask, well, what's the difference? Quite simply, Blue Vector looks at payloads coming into the enterprise. Payloads meaning Word documents, attachments, PDFs, executables, those sorts of things. Cyber Sentinel does not. Cyber Sentinel looks at simply DNS request and response data, again, to, to, to detect malicious threats coming into the enterprise. Either one of these two solutions are highly effective on their own. But our belief, and the reason we're doing this joint webinar, is that both of them combined create a virtually airtight, malicious threat tight, if you will, um, uh, defense against malicious threats coming into the enterprise. And so um, that's why we're doing this show at Anabar, that both of these solutions, both jointly deployed in a given customer environment, can be extremely effective at, at, at addressing both, both of these approaches that hackers may use to, uh, to uh, threaten the cybersecurity of a given customer. So Bruce, why don't you begin? Okay, yes, hello everyone. I'm Bruce Brown, a senior cybersecurity engineer focused on the Cyber Sentinel solution and working closely with Blue Vector. So in a few moments, as Tad said, I'm gonna take you through um, the joint solution. Uh, I will in particular explain uh, for you how Cyber Sentinel works, the value of the solution, and uh, how the two uh, can work together. Uh, Cyber Sentinel will, uh, in conjunction with Blue Vector, will take you beyond uh, the signature rules, signature solution, and into this machine learning arena to truly broaden your, your aperture of uh, detection capability and reduces the burden on the security team uh, trying to keep up with this continual uh, flood of threats. As Todd said, we're also interoperable uh, with existing software, and we can dramatically shrink your time to detection uh, when uh, of threats, uh, you know, of, of malware threatening your organization as well as existing malware that may be already in or trying to get into your organization. So with all that said, I'm going to turn it over to our partner, uh, Jeff Fallon. Jeff is a chief evangelist uh, at Acuity for the Blue Vector Solution. And so, Jeff, if you want to start us off here today. Sure. Um, good morning, everybody. You want to slide over to the next slide? There we go. Great. Um, we appreciate everybody taking time out of their schedule today. and. Uh, uh, really, the reason we got together is, and Bruce and I were having a discussion, and a lot of our customers are struggling with uh, some basic problems. Their teams are overwhelmed with data. Um, they, have, uh, they don't have the staff and the people they need to deal with that data. And the organization is sitting there saying, listen, we've bought all the tools we're supposed to buy. We've deployed all of the solutions we're supposed to deploy, and yet we're still having problems. Things are getting through. And so as the market begins to look at um, new techniques uh, to help them detect uh, advanced threats, uh, this is where Blue Vector and Jeskel have, have been pulled into organizations. We normally get pulled into organizations that uh, have funded projects and uh, they've identified issues around um, using uh, advanced uh, threat intel or advanced detection techniques or uh, tools that they're bringing in. Uh, maybe they're trying to consolidate their IT infrastructure or the tool sets they have, or they're trying to gain the benefits of automation and aggregation. And so 
part of what we're going to show you today is how you can actually achieve um, uh, some of these capabilities in, in this unified solution. So uh, what we like to do, because this is a hybrid approach, this is not a, uh, a solution that falls into a nice, neat bucket the way Gardner likes to define things, we like to provide you with a little picture and, and, and tell you what we are and what we are not. So um, everyone can read that screen, but I want to walk you through a couple of things here on the platform to orient you a little bit in terms of what the solution's doing uh, and sort of where we sit within the ecosystem of devices and ca capabilities in the network um, uh, environment. So uh, you can see Blue Vector there. We are a network security appliance. It's a 2U appliance that sits at the network gateway or behind a proxy. This is a passive solution. Now, one of the very interesting thing is, is we'll, as we walk you through here today, the platform works in near real time, meaning we're analyzing anywhere from 500 to 1,000 files or payloads a second. Uh, we're looking at millions of packets and we're providing alerts in milliseconds. So organizations are now able to deploy a passive solution that will respond quickly enough from an engineering perspective where you can drive the rest of the infrastructure that you already have in place to do the blocking and other remediation steps uh, that you've implemented. So the key here is, is that this is an interoperable capability that's meant to drop into the existing architecture uh, that your existing teams use where you can apply policies that you've already validated and implemented, but now we're moving you from a retrospective uh, mindset into a real-time posture. And this candidly is where you move from you know, finding and discovering to actually hunting. So you'll see that we refer to hunting. Uh, more and more teams are trying to uh, become much more uh, proactive about finding uh, bad things and eradicating them from the infrastructure. And so um, we believe that using the combined machine learning techniques that we have here will really, really elevate the overall capability of, the, of your organization. So we're sitting at the gateway. We're a passive device. We're taking a copy of the network traffic and running it through a very high-performance network forensics tool so uh, called Bro IDS. Um, what we've done is we've sort of hot-rotted that stack and made it very simple to use. Uh, and so one of the features and capabilities of the system is a customization capability um, that leverages the Bro IDS stack. So we're combining network forensics and metadata analysis into a real-time payload and exploit capability with the DNS analysis. So you have an analytics platform that combines capabilities and tool sets that normally sit in different parts of the organization, and we're doing that in a single pane of glass. Uh, this is a machine learning-based capability. A couple of things is the system is deployed with um, what we call classifiers or algorithms. These are um, detection classifiers that have been trained in our labs. We've spent nearly five years building these capabilities, and we'll talk to you a little bit about um, uh, the secret sauce there. But the key is, is that uh, when you deploy a device, you literally, it's uh, racked and stacked, um, you drop it into the infrastructure, you assign an IP address, and you're up and running. Typical deployment takes about 20 minutes. So in terms of ROI uh, and your ability to see results, it's very, very quickly. So an organization does not have to learn. Um, once we deploy Blue Vector, it works out of the box. And then one of the things that we have, we'll talk about in, in one of the later slides, is we've got the only platform in the world that actually allows an organization to do their own machine learning on the device and let the box learn or you can teach it over time. Um, again, uh, we're really trying to help organizations move from this retrospective uh, posture into a real-time posture. Uh, again, we're at the endpoint. You can see here we're not sitting at the, at the endpoint. We're sitting at the network, excuse me. And the key is our philosophy is trust nothing, suspect everything. So we've got a very high-performance capability uh, where we're looking at uh, all of the traffic coming in. We're not using uh, heuristics or reputation or uh, feeds or scores uh, or blacklisting. To drop traffic, we're literally looking at all of that traffic. Uh, the device is meant to be deployed. Um, there's no cloud connection, so it's deployed on site. You're not, we're not requiring you to uh, upload content or files to, uh, to a cloud. All of the analysis is done.
done on box. So this helps organizations that have privacy concerns uh, or don't want to be shipping content off-site for any reason. Um, one of the nice things that we do with the Bro um, uh, infrastructure and the stack is we allow organizations to um, pull in intelligence uh, data feeds or IPs and correlate those uh, uh, intel feeds at the network edge as opposed to having to push it back into the SIM tool. So we're now giving you intelligence correlation of, against not only the network traffic, at, but as well as the payloads coming into the infrastructure. A key point for this system is that it was originally developed uh, what we call an a priori or prior knowledge requirement. In other words, this is not a signature-based tool. Uh, everyone's got plenty of signature-based tools deployed uh, in a variety of capabilities, whether it's in their IDS or IPS firewalls or in their AV. The, re the real issue is, is that 80% or more of the threats that are penetrating organizations are, are evading these signature-based tools, uh, and this system was specifically designed to deal with that problem. So uh, organizations that are struggling with um, uh, ransomware and uh, polymorphic or automatically changing uh, threats that are hitting the infrastructure, this system is really designed to help you deal with that. Additionally, those signature-based tools require a lot of upkeep and updating signatures. The, uh, the platform is really uh, built and designed where you've got a much more resilient defense posture that lasts for uh, much longer periods of time. Maybe you'll update the platform once a year maximum, but the detection capability of the system has been shown to work over very long periods of time. For example, we've gotten brand new zero days that we've run through the system and detected those with algorithms as old as three years. So um, this is not a dynamic analysis or uh, a sandbox approach. We are not doing any runtime analysis. Static analytic that runs again at the network level. We're performing an analysis in um, view in anywhere from 10 to 12 milliseconds and then um, allowing you to integrate those results with your other tools internally to add additional context and analytics. So um, I think that gives us a pretty good intro to the system. Maybe we'll uh, go to the next slide real quick, uh, Bruce. Yeah, so this is just a simple picture. So we've talked about the technology and what's going on under the hood, but the reality is, is that we've got to be able to help customers deal with the, the, the major business risk areas that they have. We talked about it early on. They're overwhelmed with data. They don't have enough people to deal with that. And many times, when, if there's a breach, they're finding out about it from a third party, and they're finding out about it anywhere from you know, 180 days or longer. And so this third party um, notification, whether it's partner or someone else, is a huge problem. We want to allow organizations to pull discovery of, of new and advanced threats to the left. And this slide is really backed up by a use case from one of our top customers where they have moved their real-time response from weeks where they're literally measuring it uh, in seconds internally, where they're under 180 seconds now, where they identify a new, a completely new and unknown threat, um, isolate it, take that endpoint offline, um, isolate that user and do it in under three minutes. And it's fundamentally transformed the organization. And so one of the challenges we have is to help uh, organizations understand that when you bring a machine learning platform into your infrastructure and you begin to work in a real-time mindset, the automation, the aggregation, and visibility that you get that allows you to hunt has a whole bunch of downstream cost benefits in terms of uh, the throughput and efficiency of your teams, uh, the accuracy of the work that you're doing, automation of many manual processes that occur on the back end, and we'll walk you through some of that. So, Next slide, Bruce. So this is a high-level overview to kind of help you understand how the system behaves and how it works. The next slide, I have got an architecture slide, but this is to let you understand Effectively, when we deploy the device, it's a single to you box. So, for example, in an environment, if you have, uh, you're, you're bringing everything through a collapsed set of gateways or trusted internet connections, uh, we've got 
uh, customer where they have three gateways. We sit at each one of those three gateways. We deploy it. We're looking at all of their web and all of their email traffic on a single device. So the system is deployed as a mini cloud, so there's no central manager. You log into one blue vector, you can manage that device, and then also look across and manage the rest of the infrastructure. We're uh, pulling, uh, we're uh, using Bro to do all of the network protocol analysis, file carving, uh, and um, intelligence correlation. Uh, that allows us to, uh, again, look at very, very high speed gateways in real time. Uh, we're running those files then through a real time um, analytics stack. Uh, you can see there as we're processing that data, we're giving you a whole bunch of uh, what I'll call uh, manual analysis or in sometimes reverse engineering capabilities, and we've automated that. The entire system runs in memory. So what happens is, is we're able to look at hundreds of files, millions of packets, and provide parallel processing of those streams coming into the infrastructure. And you can see there, we're looking at malicious shell code, URLs, files. We give you the ability um, through a custom uh, a Docker environment to do custom analytics where you can install your own row scripts, uh, run cron jobs, and do a lot of really interesting work. And this is how we're interacting with Cyber Sentinel there, you can see. And then any AV signatures or tools that you have, they plug right into the infrastructure. And then if you're a shop that has Yara, uh, or you're writing your own Yara rules uh, or sharing them, you can plug those into the system there. And then when you combine that payload void analysis stack with the Cyber Sentinel looking at the DNS, you get this really powerful capability where you can now aggregate context and analytics uh, into a single platform. What we try to do then is understanding your policies that you've got is build those rules and automations into the system so that we can provide you with the ability to now um, effectively run your, 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 your downstream remediation processes as quickly as possible. Most organizations understand what they want to do when they find bad stuff. The problem is, is they spend a huge amount of time sort of wading through the haystack, right? They're, they're the needle in the stack of needles. So bread and butter is to help organizations do that work very, very quickly, where we can allow them to automate workflows, deliver them seamlessly across the infrastructure. And what's interesting, our, our customers have uh, junior tier one analysts working in the same device and in the same uh, tool set as our tier three hunters that are doing very, very high-end analytics. And so uh, as we're running through the system here, we're providing you with intelligence correlation, uh, a host of parallel analysis, DNS analysis, and getting that into um, the tool sets uh, that you normally put your work in. So if you're pushing inf uh, uh, information into a SIM tool, uh, the system is designed to integrate with all of the major um, uh, output devices. If you uh, want to route content into a sandbox infrastructure, you can do that seamlessly through the RESTful API and we've got out-of-the-box integrations with all the major sample vendors uh, and uh, any other tool sets or services that you may be using, the, the goal is, again, is to plug this into the infrastructure. So once we've done that, um, this allows you, again, we want to be able to collapse that as much as possible. Uh, to the far right of the screen, you can see uh, some of the outputs that we, that, we, uh, that we work in. We've got a wonderful key mapping feature. Um, for those of you that are on Q-Radar, where we uh, have the leaf format is, uh, is um, uh, supported as well. Once the system is up and running, which is very quickly, this is then where the learning process kicks in, and um, we allow you to now really fine-tune the system, uh, provide you with a really custom detection capability, which is very, very interesting. Uh, Bruce, anything you want to add to that slide? No, not at this time. Uh, very good explanation, Jeff. What I'll do is I'll pick up in a chart or two and start to explain uh, where we fit uh, within the Blue Vector, how we fit within the Blue, Be Blue Vector appliance, and um, give you a peek at how C Cyber Sentinel actually works and can allow you to, to build new network malware detectors. So I'll let you continue from here. Perfect. Let me jump to the slide. 
Uh, so for those of you that like architectural diagrams and Visio and things like that, we've got something for you. Um, this is just to give you an overview in terms of uh, what's going on under the hood. Uh, we do offer uh, both a 1 gigabit per second as well as a 10 gigabit per second um, version of the device. Uh, we are standardized on a 2U platform, and it's important to understand in terms of acquisition, we're not charging for additional calls or file types or file numbers or submission. Um, really looking at a gateway deployment, so the point of presence that you uh, want to monitor, um, and we'll walk you through some of the deployment scenarios that we support, but the key here is, is that you're going to have traffic come in within our collector environment. We're going to run that content through a host of the analyzers that we've talked about uh, in milliseconds and then allow you to automate any content routing uh, out of and back into the system where we're pulling uh, uh, metadata back from, you know, it could be a FireEye implementation or something you've got from Cisco or um, another IBM tool. Uh, all that information is aggregated um, into uh, uh, routing this out into different incident response and ticketing systems. Uh, if you, um, uh, depending on the tools you have, any orchestration and automation as well. So, um, again, meant to sit inside the security infrastructure. We are monitoring, measuring, prioritizing all the threat <laughs> tools and automating the downstream process around those incidents. Next slide. Okay, this looks like this is you. Um, okay, thank you, Jeff. So uh, we'll have some time for Q&A at the end here if, if you'd like to, uh, and I'll let Jeff um, uh, chime in or, or jump back in here in, in a few charts. So what I'd like to do now is uh, sort of um, help you understand the, the genesis, if you will, of Cyber Sentinel uh, and you know how it um, how it enables you to detect uh, exploits uh, within your network, and how it ultimately works with Blue Vector and the value the two technologies provide. So, um, the genesis of Cyber Sentinel is really an IBM research. This is an IBM research uh, technology, and uh, Jessica, being an IBM reseller, was able to team with research and sell resell the technology and continue development of it uh, as well. And so. Uh, this technology has been found very, uh, very effective in detecting things like botnets and other uh, initial ex exploits uh, to your network. And so, as you heard Todd say early on, uh, we focus at, at, at the present. Um, it's not necessarily the only focus you can have, but the, the solution, you know, as, I, as I say in this chart, is both a solution and a development platform. So you can expand. Uh, way beyond uh, DNS detection if you choose to into the realm of your own protocols and so forth. But uh, DNS is extremely important. It is the gating factor. It's the gateway, if you will, to the Internet. Before you can get out and do anything on the network, as you know, you have to go through DNS, generally speaking. And so it is the first point of attack. It's often the first indicator of an attack within your network. And indeed, over the years, we've seen some very serious threats to the Internet as a whole via DNS. We've seen DNS cache poisoning as well as a DNS changer exploit, which is a, basically a way to divert you away from uh, the, the site that you want to go to or the information that you want to get on the Internet and send you off to a malicious site where you're infected and, and then your, your systems are exploited, data theft takes place, and, and you know, data destruction, a number of things, of course, can happen. Um, we continue to see... Uh, amplification attacks or distributed denial of service attacks using DNS as a launching platform to uh, to attack your networks and you know deny service, uh, slow your systems down, and so forth. Some of the most recent very uh, costly and destructive attacks have ultimately depended on this this approach that hackers have of of uh, distributed denial of service or DNS amplification by taking advantage of the many open recursive servers that are on the network can remain on the network today. We also continue to see tunneling attacks where DNS is exploited by hackers to tunnel into your organization right through the firewall unaware, and steal your information uh, and perform a host of other malicious activities. Uh, we continue to see uh, just, you know, general subdomain attacks where, uh, you know, the, the features of DNS are taken advantage of in a negative way to 
slow your system down, uh, which ultimately costs you a great deal of money over time through loss of service and capability. So how does Cyber Sentinel do this? Well, as I said, it's both a, a solution and a development platform. I've described for you at a high level the solution. We'll see a little bit more in another chart. But it's also a, a network malware detector development platform. It's built on two mature IBM technologies, the IBM SPSS uh, modeler, which is a statistical package for social scientists. Uh, sciences is what that uh, acronym is all about. It's been broadly deployed um, and for a long time within the market. IBM acquired it a few years ago. And along with statistical capability and analytics, it provides a very rich suite of machine learning uh, algorithms. And so it is ultimately these algorithms that Cyber Sentinel provides to our customers and relies on to, to build the detectors that we have. The, also, the other foundational component, if you will, is InfoSphere Streams. Uh, Streams is organic technology coming, again, out of IBM Research, broadly deployed for nearly a decade now, and it's very effective uh, in allowing you to do real-time uh, network data streaming analytics um, with a development platform so you can build new uh, streaming analytic detectors. Okay, so the two work in conjunction together to watch your packets in real-time sitting at the uh, gateway to the network, the point of presence, as you, uh, as you hear, heard Jeff explain, uh, to detect attacks coming in, or existing threats that are already in your network and trying to get out or take data from you, steal data, data theft, exfiltration, et cetera. So the combination of these two foundational components can give you very speedy evolution uh, as the threats evolve. Next chart. So this chart um, starts to help you see visually how Cyber Sentinel works. Um, Streams is uh, it's very straightforward uh, for a cybersecurity engineer to leverage Streams to ingest different types of data, um, extract in interesting features, uh, enrich that data, you know, perform machine learning algorithms against it, score in real time, et cetera. So if you, you're starting at the left-hand side here, we could – uh, ingest recorded DNS data to tell you perhaps over the last week what has been going on. Of course, we can ingest live feed data uh, seamlessly through the Blue Vector appliance. I'll talk about that here in a few more minutes. Uh, you're going to want to know geographically where the attacks are coming from or where the existing um, malware you have in your organization is going to. So geographic enrichment is very important. Um, we tell you if, if – um, something is going on that's already blacklisted, but we allow you to filter out um, domains or, or sites that are already on your blacklist and whitelist so that you can start to detect the unknown unknowns. What's going on that we don't know about and have never seen before? Uh, is this an initial exploit that's taking place? This helps you in that regard. Okay, and then at the bottom you can see a palette coming from the SPSS modeler of different machine learning algorithms and, and how you can use these uh, algorithms to score um, uh, data as it goes by in real time within the streams environment. So the two technologies work hand in hand, and we're integrated uh, with the QRadar SIM so that we can uh, provide alerts and additional forensic capability, attack reconstruction, and so forth uh, within QRadar. So today, if you're an existing QRadar customer, uh, you can uh, go to the QRadar app exchange. Both Blue Vector and um, JustGal Cyber Sentinel have uh, apps there. Uh, you can download our Cyber Sentinel app. You could run it uh, locally, independently on a virtual machine that we provide, or you could deploy it. We could help you uh, deploy it within Blue Vector today. I can demonstrate this uh, particular app, uh, sample application that's on the exchange on a Blue Vector appliance today, and show you how this technology works. So I'm actually going to try to back up a couple of charts here. This is the last chart that Jeff was talking about. So we immediately can take advantage of this custom high-speed 1 or 10 gig interface that Acuity has developed. The Bro IDS uh, fits into or, or Cyber Sentinel integrates seamlessly with Bro, Bro IDS. Um, IBM Research initially, um, several years ago, targeted the Blue Vector appliance as a platform for Cyber Sentinel. So Bro capability was built in from the very beginning into Cyber Sentinel, so it's a natural integration to, to put this technology within a Blue Vector appliance. Uh, Blue Vector provides a very secure container uh, for Cyber Sentinel to run in, and today, as I said, we have um, this QRadar app, example app running in it. 
we have the streams uh, system running and the, the SPSS scoring mechanism running within Blue Vector today, and we can demonstrate that uh, for you very quickly. So moving ahead, um, I want to point out that, that you know the challenge that most customers face, or the, the thing that they fear is they look at machine learning, they can immediately see the benefit that's obvious, but uh, how much difficulty, how much investment will be required, additional staffing to do machine learning? Uh, there's a, perhaps a you know concern or fear that this is too difficult. Um, and so I want to show you, uh, just give you a peek, if you will, into how the IBM Research Organization built the Cyber Sentinel solution. They leveraged off from an auto classifier capability within SPSS. What does this mean? Well, you know, if, if you look to develop uh, your own detector using Cyber Sentinel and run it within the Blue Vector appliance, uh, you're going to perhaps pick an existing protocol that's been, a, you know, that uh, has uh, seen an attack or is, uh, could be um, vulnerable to attack. You, you understand your protocols obviously better than anybody else, and so you'll know um, how that protocol works and the indicators, if you will, of an attack. And so once you have that information, you can feed it. We call it feature vectors in machine learning vernacular, but you will feed these feature vectors, which are indicators of an attack in your, in your protocols, into um, SPSS, and it will tell you the best machine learning algorithm for the job. That's the heavy lifting. That's the difficult part of machine learning is picking the right algorithm. There's a suite of algorithms, um, and this can take the PhD, if you will, out of machine learning and lower the barrier of entry uh, for this very important and uh, interesting technology. So the last couple of charts here before we wrap up, just give you a feel for how you would deploy Blue Vector and, and Cyber Sentinel. Uh, both seek to sit at the, the gateway, the point of presence, if you will, on the Internet uh, to tell you about attacks that threaten your entire organization. So we're not focused strictly on the endpoint, which is very, very valuable. If you can stop attacks or detect attacks before they enter the network, um, you, you stand a good chance of completely avoiding uh, the financial loss, the reputation loss, and so forth. It can go with these high-profile um, hacks, if you will. So here's an example. You can read the chart, of course, uh, showing you where you might deploy Blue Vector, how strategy, if you will, for protecting uh, your, your various assets within the organization. Additionally, you could uh, leverage this in the intranet uh, between perhaps organizations. Uh, this can become very valuable uh, during uh, mergers and so forth. But certainly watching your internal traffic for insider threat and so on is, is very, very valuable. Uh, Jeff, would, would you like to add anything here uh, to these last two charts? Well, yeah, a couple of things. So um, one of the things we tried to do is develop a platform that would provide organizations with maximum visibility across those infrastructures that they need to monitor. So, you know, we end up being deployed in any number of spots with, uh, within organizations. So um, if the enterprise is, a, is an issue, they'll deploy us, uh, um, you know, appropriately as well as organizations that may be also moving to the cloud or they're building a cloud so that we can give them you know, visibility into both their north and southbound internet traffic as well as east and westbound application traffic. And that's one of the nice features of the Bro IDS platform is it gives us the ability to look across environments that are really what we refer to as a post-PC environment. So the system out of the box supports you know, um, all of the 32-bit and 64-bit Windows um, file types, as well as um, OSX, Linux, um, APKs for Android, and so forth. So in an environment, for example, where you have developers uh, or employees who are disconnecting from the network and they're doing work um, offline at home while they're on the road, uh, either with a mobile device or a laptop, Many times they'll get infected, and what happens is, is when they plug back into the infrastructure, um, this is when an adversary will try to get into the network or into the data center, and this is where we're really helping back up um, uh, those uh, organizations that are concerned about that. So the system's uh, proven to be very, very um, resilient and valuable in that area. I also want to add that, and uh, you talked a little bit earlier about the DDoS um, attacks. Um, the platform is fully IPv6 compliant on both the data and the management side of things. So uh, we've got a customer where not only we're looking at the north and southbound internet traffic as well as their east and westbound application traffic, we're also monitoring all of their IoT 
and machine-to-machine -machine traffic, and that's all done into a single pane of glass. So if you think about organizations, again, that are trying to collapse their IT infrastructure and tool sets, they're trying to get uh, visibility across, across SCADA, ICS, and machine-based uh, infrastructures, as well as understand what those potential impacts may be uh, in their TCP environments. This is a really nice, elegant way to begin to do that and then aggregate and automate that, uh, that traffic back into the existing tool sets. So. Excellent, thank you. So that's actually a, a, a good segue into um, something I wanted to make sure I, I pointed out with Cyber Sentinel. Um, you might initially think of this as, you know, protecting you from inbound exploits or attacks. What we find is, is we've worked with several clients now in piloting Cyber Sentinel within their organization and looking at their data. Uh, we found that they're always um, already infected and, not, and are not aware of it. And it's very interesting to see how, you know, late at night, over the weekend, we'll see a, uh, some malware that's already existing that they're unaware of in the organization come to life and start beaconing out, trying to reach out to a command and control center, or whatever, uh, or exfiltrate data via a tunnel. And so, as Jeff said, we're looking northbound and southbound, and it's very helpful to know where you're already infected and be able to pinpoint uh, those endpoints and so forth. And the first thing the malware typically has to do is go through DNS to get out. So again, we're, we're detecting things on, on the very front end here. And then as you think about, as we've seen these high-profile attacks uh, over the last couple of years, it's been very concerning uh, to, to, to organizations. There's generally a pattern that's followed, and you can you know, talk about this in a lot of different ways, but from a general perspective, there's an initial, your, your organization is targeted. Most malware, by the way, is targeted towards a particular um, organization. And so that's another value of machine learning, uh, both within Blue Vector and Cyber Sentinel, is we're training, we're looking at, we're learning about what's normal traffic for your organization specifically and what is not. This is a very key value to machine learning. But there's an initial, you're targeted, and the manipulation begins with the, the hacker or the uh, state-sponsored terrorist organization, whatever, starting to look at and learn about your network, testing the edges, if you will, testing the defenses, okay? And so uh, th it generally progresses then to, you know, an, an exploitation where back doors perhaps are put into your system and exploited. Then it can get, get even worse into weaponized content where uh, the the, uh, the organization, the hacker organization, will target your specific services with a malware that they developed. Then there's an installation phase and an execution phase. And by the time you get to execution, it's too late. Uh, you know, this initial manipulation, exploitation, weaponization, installation can can build, can you, you know, can take place over months, perhaps even a year, very slowly. Execution is milliseconds. Okay, and so. Um, Cyber Sentinel working in conjunction with Blue Vector can allow you to stop this before it gets to the end stage where it's too late. Um, and so we're, you know, we're trying to detect exploits and uh, before widespread infection and serious attacks uh, can occur. We're giving you this ability to rapidly develop new detectors, and we can dramatically shrink the time that it takes to understand what has happened or what is currently going on that you're not even. Uh, aware of with these uh, technologies. Uh, Jeff, I'll let you finish up with the last bullet there on Blue Vector. Yeah, I think the key again is, is that, um, you know, some of these meat and potato problems that organizations are struggling with um, has to do with the fact that they just don't have enough people to deal with the problem. And so uh, you can't keep using a lot of the same tools to deal with these problems, particularly since they're changing and morphing and adapting very, very quickly. And so we wanted to try to uh, develop a capability that would, again, give organizations um, an opportunity to understand what was happening in real time. And you know, the market is uh, coming around to machine learning. Um, people are using the word the words to mean lots of different things, so it's important that you do your homework. One of the reasons why we've tried to give you some specific uh, specific understanding here, and we're happy to go into more details on follow-ups with you, but key is, is to really provide organizations with the ability to uh, rapidly improve both detection, analysis, and analytics 
so they move from retrospective into real time and they're they're able to really um, morph their their defense uh, teams into hunting teams where they can be much more proactive and we've got very 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 good results the market likes what we're doing um, customers are um, really interested in what's going on and so this is the first step in them understanding the art of the possible using machine learning techniques at the network level and not having you just sit at the endpoint and do things after the fact. Excellent. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so at this time, I, I'll open it up if there are any questions. Um, thank you very much uh, for attending today and giving us some of your time. Uh, we look forward to, uh, to talking with you in the future about these technologies.